people i'm so excited so in today's video i am going to talk about i'm just gonna give you guys an update on my life because i feel like there's been so much that has happened in the past seven months but i'm i've just been like going 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 and you guys know nothing um unless you're on my instagram or my and my facebook if you follow me on my instagram or my facebook and my stories then you definitely have an idea of what's been going on but if you don't i'm gonna clue you in right now first things first uh, i moved to ho chi minh city vietnam um, in june of 2017 and i have been here officially for seven months which is like crazy to me it's crazy amazing it's crazy awesome and it's just like some days i wake up and i'm like yeah yeah i'm in ho chi minh city i'm in vietnam huh wow i love it um so it's been interesting because i feel like at seven months i would kind of like the the honeymoon phase of moving to a different country would have worn off and there are some things that I am that shocked me in the beginning when I moved here or that I no shock is the right word I was gonna be like or that I just was like hmm that's different but I don't think I've ever maybe not ever not very often have I said hmm that's different no what it's been is I'm like that's an option I didn't know okay that's an option that was me uh, for a lot of things when I first moved here so I definitely had a lot of culture shock um, and then I came to the realization which probably seems like Loren that should have been obvious it wasn't obvious to me I think because I'm such an avid traveler and because I would take long periods of time to travel so before moving to Vietnam um, I've lived in places for for like three three and a half months I've gone away for a month at a time for other places like going on vacation and just traveling um, and so I in my mind I was like oh moving to Vietnam will be like that and it'll be really it'll just be a lot of fun and really cool and it has been a lot of fun and it has been really cool but it has been very different at the same time <laughs> moving to a different country is totally different than going for a vacation even if it's a long and extended vacation a vacation is still a vacation and living somewhere is just so different um and so there are some things that i just didn't even think of I don't know why but I just didn't think of them so um, for starters going on vacation you have like a set amount of money um, and you're like okay I have this. this is for my vacation and for me when I travel typically before money even comes close to running out I am like headed back to the States and working so it's never been a problem for me moving to a different country holy smokes it was expensive um, and not in a bad way, definitely worth every single penny, but I didn't like, again, you're probably going to be like, Loren, really though? Yes. At no point did I think, wow, well, Loren, you're going to have to like buy sheets or Loren, you should probably like work on buying a trash can and like all of your basic essentials. I, because like on vacation, those things are just kind of given to you, you know, and then when you're living somewhere, you're like, oh, I like, I'm building a life here and that costs money, obviously up front. And so I was like, oh wow, like I had to buy everything. Um, it wasn't bad, but just like I knew I had to do it, but I didn't know how much it was gonna be. So that part was really interesting and just like getting settled into my apartment and um, acclimating from like being totally and completely independent um, back home and like being able to go and get my car and go do my thing to like now having to not having that independence not being able to just hop on a motorbike or in my car and go instead I had to like have a definite place of where I was going and 
where I was leaving from. And to get around here, when I first came, I used Grab, which is like Uber or Lyft in the States. And so, as you all know, you have to have like pick up location, drop off location, and the drivers aren't being paid to like help me explore the city. So it was, it was definitely different. Um, I think another big thing about like moving somewhere is that there's far less traveling being done in the first several months than when you are like on vacation. So every place that I have been where I've been on vacation, I have been able to be like, oh, well, like, for example, my sister and I went to Portugal and we went to Fargo, Faro, not Fargo, Faro, Portugal, which is the southernmost part of Portugal. And we hung out there for a while. And then we're like, let's go up to Lisbon. It's not that far. And like, let's stop and see like these different things. And we just, we did our thing, went to some beaches and it was great. Um, and so we traveled more than our destination in Portugal. Um, we like explored new things, right? We did the same thing when we were in Germany and it was amazing, it was great. Um, I did the same thing when I lived in Spain with my mom. My mom came over and we went outside of Madrid and it was wonderful. And that's what you do when you're on vacation. But when you are living in a country, when you first move there, for me at least, the option of going, like just traveling around, to travel around, um, was not something I wanted to do right away because like I completely uprooted my life from the United States. I'm here in Vietnam and now I don't know the language, which I knew was gonna happen, but I'm like, ooh, about that. I have to find a job, which was great, um, but I had to find a job and just get like acclimated to a completely different culture. And I wanted to make sure that I had all of my ducks in a row before I just started like, woo, what up Vietnam? And just traveling everywhere um, freely because the money that I would use to travel other places was money that I had to like I not like that I had to really put to work to last me for living here and for my responsibilities that I left back in the States so it was very um, it was different I wasn't I knew about it but it was a different experience for me so um, yeah, moving somewhere to live is very different than going somewhere for a vacation. Um, when I first got here, uh, I had to figure out how to get around, which was grab, and that was pretty easy. It's very convenient. It's, again, like Lyft and Uber. And then I had to find a job. I was very, very blessed because a friend of mine that I met here in uh, Ho Chi Minh City when I came in February. He had a job, but he decided to move to Bang Tao. And he was like, hey, if you're interested, let me know. I'd love to introduce you. And I was like, yeah, I'm totally interested. I'm jet lagged, but I'm totally interested. Um, went in for the interview, really liked the boss, the boss liked me, and we just clicked. And I had my first job in Ho Chi Minh within I want to say 72 hours so it was very very simple very very easy i was very blessed in that way um and then i just kind of relaxed and like got acclimated to the city and like i said that that's where a lot of the culture shock happens um and it's some things are really big things and some things are very small things but they're just different um, I am really grateful because moving to Vietnam, I decided that I was going to just be open to a lot of things, experience a lot of things, and uh, I'm very curious and I wanted to know more about the culture and the history of Vietnam, and so that's what I really focused on. Um, and so part of the culture is like how people live their everyday life, right? And there were just some things that I'm like, For example, my two biggest things that I'm like, what? How is this an option? What? Um, and even to this day, I'm still, my mind is like, Poof. the first one, um, you will see children and babies on motorbikes. My mind is like, 
what um in america that is just not like you do not ever see that you you won't see a baby especially a baby you will never see a baby on a motorbike um and here motorbikes are the main form of transportation so there are trucks they do have cars um and there is a crazy amount of traffic but having a car is super expensive like crazy expensive in order to like drive a car most people don't have a car they drive a motorbike and so like that's what they do and so parents just like they're like oh it's mom dad and the baby and we're off on our on our way and that that's just what it is and so I was just, I still to this day, I'm like, oh, breathe, just breathe. It's okay. They're going to be fine. Freaks me out. Um, and then the second biggest thing I think for me was uh, just like, I feel like Vietnam is um, like the wild, wild east. And I say that in relation to like how the U.S. had the wild, wild west where we just figured things out. We had the industrial revolution and it was we were really coming into our own and I feel like Vietnam is in that phase as a country and so it's going from being a like a underdeveloped country to a developed country and it's really cool to see like the progress to see how it's moving but one of the things that um, still like blows my mind is like workers so in the US we have um, <clears throat> sorry in the u.s we have like a ton of safety right like their rules the regulations their safety sometimes the rules were like why would somebody do that that's stupid i'm gonna tell you why because there's somebody that decided to do something without that rule and like probably died okay so here for example um like when they're doing road work um or like they have the little manhole covers and like somebody has to go into the ground underneath the street and do whatever they do down there um it's like one orange cone here's the manhole one orange cone here one orange cone here and traffic like bruh your life right meanwhile back in america we're like okay the manhole is over here in the far left lane and we're gonna block off the far left lane and the center lane all traffic's gonna go on the far right lane so this person and whatever they're doing is safe and so that the people are safe <sighs> nope no um it's just different for me like i still like i said i'm still like Oh my god, you guys, I just saw this guy and he was like in the middle of the street and he had like one orange cone. Literally, it's like one or two orange cones. And people, it's like magic, the traffic here. It's crazy. It's crazy. I, it's crazy. But it flows and functions and like people just go around. So here's a little traffic cone and people are like, and you're like, so I'm still fascinated and like in awe every time I see it. Um, so those have been like the two biggest culture shock things that have happened. Ooh, yeah, ooh, yeah. As some of you know, I have a ton of allergies. For those of you that don't know, I can only eat 43 foods. So unfortunately, I haven't been able to eat out. Um, I, I don't eat out. I actually cook most of my meals. I want to say most of my meals yeah most of my meals there are a couple of restaurants that I go to where they know me <laughs> they know me as the rice girl surprise and um, so they're like oh okay and they bring me out like my rice and then my chicken and some veggies and they just know that's what I eat and they're really really nice but it took that also I found was um, that was a challenge that I thought I was ready for but I wasn't um, because I knew that I have to explain hey I have allergies like I need you to I need just rice just chicken just vegetables very plain nothing special but trying to communicate that across with a language barrier mm, 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 Lauren I would have thought Germany would have been a lesson nope but it's okay it's it's great now um 
that is one thing that I will say that I really do love and that I'm so grateful for. The people here are so friendly and amazing. They are just, they're very warm. Uh, they're very just hospitable. Um, so even when like there is an issue with uh, like communication, you know, they'll get somebody they're like, oh, you, you speak better English, come over here. Or you, you speak better Japanese, come over here. And they really try and help um, the foreigners that are in the country just they try to make things easier which is really nice um, and they're also they're just very friendly overall I have not had one bad experience let me make sure that's true nope I have not had one bad experience with a Vietnamese person now I'm not saying that they're all nice and they're all super sweet but I'm saying I haven't experienced anything crazy um, I have been super blessed because everyone from like my co-workers at both of my jobs I'll tell you about that in a minute but my co-workers to like just some friends that I made outside of work are all just amazing some of the most amazing people Ugh, they're just so sweet and I'm like there are so many great people in the world anyway they're yeah I couldn't say I just I have so many great things to say about these people, but I'm gonna move Thank on. You. Um, my jobs. So I actually have two jobs. My first job, I work for a tour guide company. And in order to become a tour guide, um, people have to have, they have to speak a certain level of English. And so my job is to come in and help them with their pronunciation, help them become more comfortable talking to foreigners, help them um, help them really just enunciate their words more clear, more clear, that's wrong, to enunciate their words clearly so that people can understand them and help them with their listening skills. Um, so that part is really interesting and it's been a lot of fun. Um, and so that's my first job. And then my second job, I teach at two public high schools. Uh, the first one is about three minutes from my house and I teach IELTS, which is an international English language test. Um, I don't think that's what it stands for, but anyway, it's very interesting test. They have to take this test in order to graduate and in order to, some kids have to take the test in order to graduate. They have, um, like a national, like national, they have a standardized test in four different subjects, one of which is English, that they have to pass in order to graduate from high school. And then they also have to take the test for when they want a job. And English is a big thing, they have to know it. So it's very interesting. So I've been teaching that. I focus mostly on listening and speaking um, sometimes. And then my second job, I focus on all four. So reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Um, and it's been very interesting because I never thought I would teach high school. Never. Like ever. Ever. And I actually like it, which is really cool. Um, I just never thought I'd teach high school because I'm like, high school kids are, <sighs> they're, I'm tired. Uh, that's what I think of. When I thought of high school kids, that's what I thought of. However, Teaching a foreign language to high school kids, I think is much better and it's easier than teaching to elementary age children um, or primary age, primary school age children because when they're in primary school, like first grade, second grade, you have to constantly change things up because their attention span is so small. It's just like bing, 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 bing. In high school, it's short for sure. Uh, I mean, the minute I turn around to, like, write on the board, they are, like, they just started talking. But they also know when to check their behavior. So that's been a very interesting experience, and I've absolutely loved it. Another big thing that I've done since I've moved here is taking care of myself first, which probably sounds crazy. Um, but I work. I work so much um, and I just I have such a strong work ethic like I really want to make sure that my job is done well that it's done right and that it's you know I try and make whatever I'm doing as 
have the least amount of stress as possible. Um, and so my previous job, I was a manager at a hotel and that in itself just came with a ton of crazy things that happened. It's a hotel. Um, and so I just operated in like this high stress environment all the time. Um, and then I would take that from, you know, my first job, my main job, and I take it into my second job and then I'd take it home or take it when I would go and hang out with friends. And so a big thing here has been that stress level has come down. Excuse me, it's come down. And also, um, my I've really put myself first. So back in the States, I'd be like, no, I need to go into work. I need to do this. No, I don't feel well, but like I don't have anybody else. Um, I'm the manager that has to take care of this and I would just get things done. And here it's been so nice where I literally can just call my boss and be like, I don't call boss minute because that's just rude and I've been a manager, but I can call him like the day before and be like, hey, I have a fever or hey, I have a cold. I don't want to go in and teach kids. Not so much that I don't want to teach, but I don't want them to get what I have. That doesn't make any sense. Um, and I've also been able to just take days and be like, I need a mental health day. Can you guys cover my Monday? Or I'm taking off, you know, um, coming up, um, we, they celebrate the lunar new years. And so we celebrate the solar new year, which is December 31st to January 1st. And they celebrate the lunar new year, which is this year, I believe on February 5th. Um, and so it's a huge celebration, uh, People are off, kids are off from school for two weeks and it's just, it's, it's huge. It's a big deal. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm taking those two weeks and an extra one. They're like, okay, cool. Do you. And I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, also with my health, I have been able to just like, I started, um, meditating and just like calming my mind. And I realized that I op used to, I used to operate under so much pressure, so much stress, so much anxiety. I think that was a big thing that contributed to me having poor health. And so um, about two months ago, I started just getting up in the morning, praying and meditating, exercising, and then going to work. And it's been wonderful. I freaking love it. Um, I feel like, it's gonna be okay, right? Like, no matter what I'm doing or how crazy um, things seem, that I can just quiet my mind and be grateful for right here, right now, in this moment, which has been just, it, uh, it's amazing. And then I can start to like think about other things and if it serves me, if it's not serving me, if it has purpose, if, or if it's a distraction, and I'm able to sort those things out. So that's been amazing. Um, I've also been able to find doctors here, which was a big worry for my family because I was the special kid in my fa my family. I was always sick, and so they were like, "What happens if you get sick in Vietnam?" They have great doctors here. Um, they have really good doctors. I have been uh, there's a clinic that I go to, and the doctors are great. So it's been very helpful, very wonderful. Um, and I'm just learning to continue to put myself first so that I can help other people in the future. And that's been really nice. Um, my, one of my bosses, he's so nice. He's like, you work too hard. Just relax. <laughs> I'm like, I actually work way less here than I did in the States. So when he says like, you're working too hard, I'm like, but really though, I don't think so but okay, I'll take your advice and relax. So that part's really nice. Um, I have also learned to just, I, have, I don't wanna say it's something I've learned. I've been, I have the opportunity and I've been able to really embrace and start being creative again. So there have been a lot of things, uh, some of which you guys know of. I have my own blog post or my own blog, my own website and my blog. I'm doing more videos on YouTube. Uh, I'm also launching um, different classes and courses here to help people that really want to learn to speak English, help them build their confidence. Um, 
and I'm also working with some people back home on um, a project that we have going on back home that we've had and it's just been in the works and there have been things that we've been doing behind the scenes and being that I'm here and I'm working so much less than I was at home, I'm now really able to move things forward with that, which has been wonderful. And I've met some other amazing people um, and we are collaborating on another business. So I am staying very busy. Uh, I like to be busy, um, but I also like that downtime where it's just me and God. So it's been, I've really enjoyed it. Um, now I'm going to answer a couple of questions that I get asked pretty commonly. Am I learning Vietnamese? Yes. <laughs> um, I have started learning Vietnamese. I am, it has not been a priority. So my Vietnamese is like, whew, it's not amazing. It's not as great as my Spanish is what I will say yet. Um, I will learn Vietnamese and my goal is to be fluent by the end of the year or semi as fluent as I can become um, I at least want to be beyond uh, Elementary like I want to be an at an intermediate level. That would be amazing um, And for me that just means that I have to make it a priority number one I also have to practice every single day and which is easy. I live in Vietnam um, and for me, I noticed the big thing is that I have to uh, listen and repeat. So how I learn a language and what I feel is one of the most effective ways to learn a language is by listening and repeating and starting first with my um, listening and speaking skills and then going to the reading and the writing skills. So that's where I am. Um, I have an audio program that I listen to and that I'm working with. I also have some amazing friends that are super sweet. Um, most people here, when they hear that I want to learn Vietnamese, are super helpful. And they're like very excited to help me learn, which is awesome. Uh, and then, yeah, those are the two big things. I have an audio program. I have some friends. And oh, and today, starting today for me, I am going to go take um, a Vietnamese lesson in person with someone. You're probably like, Loren, why haven't you done that before? Because I have people that have been teaching me for free, that's why. Um, and again, for me, it's not so much the structure of the classroom as much as it is hearing and repeating over and over and over again, which I don't need to pay for. I can like have record people saying something and then me repeat it over and over again until it sticks. So that's why. Um, my, the next question that I am asked very often in. Do I miss my family? The answer is yes and no. Um, yes, I miss my family. I love my family. My family is amazing. I love them. Uh, but I'm very blessed that I am traveling around the world today um, and at this point in history because I am able to like use FaceTime and Facebook and Skype and I talk to my family all the time. Uh, and we're very much, we're, we're close, we're connected. So I don't feel that I'm missing out on a lot. Um, for example, my brother had a baby since I moved here and he is so cute. Um, and I've missed that like super tiny baby stage, but I don't feel like I've completely missed out and like my heart isn't broken because they keep posting videos and photos and I just feel like I'm watching him grow and so I'm very excited to meet him when I go back to the States but I'm also I don't feel heartbroken and like oh my nephew doesn't know me he won't even remember this time when he's older so it's okay I feel like but I I'm experiencing him growing which is awesome so he's not gonna go to therapy later uh, and I'm gonna get to hold him and he's still super duper cute, so it's okay. Um, so things like that. So yes, I miss them. No, I don't. I will say, the big question that people ask me a lot is, am I staying out here forever? Like, when am I planning on coming home? Um, and the answer to that is, I don't know. So originally when I came out here, I said that I was gonna stay for one year at least and then figure it out. 
um, and then maybe go back to the States. Maybe I'd move to a different country and teach English in a different country. Um, I really like Vietnam. I feel like there is so much happening here that this country is just blossoming and I feel very blessed to be a part of it. So I've decided that I'm going to stay for two years. Um, and so I'm, I'm in month seven, so I really only have like a year and a half left. Easy, easy, easy. FYI, um, if you've been hearing traffic throughout this video, that is what it is. Like, for whatever reason, you can just hear the outside, like my window is open. I don't know why. My windows are closed. <laughs> Everything's locked down, no bugs are getting in, but the sound, like that honking exhibit A. Anyway, so um, I am planning on staying out here for at least two years in total, so June 2020 is when I may or may not move, but right now I'm just very happy being where I am. I'm very happy with my life. Um, I'm very happy just learning Vietnamese and understanding more and meeting more amazing and wonderful people here. Um, there are more places that I want to live and there are more places that I want to travel to, so I'm just going to do that and then we'll see where I go from here, but for now I am staying for two years. Anyway, um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It was really long, but it was seven months worth of stuff, right? So thumbs up, um, click the subscribe button as well as the bell to get notifications for when I post. Leave comments below. Let me know if you have questions or if you want to know something and I'd be more than happy to answer them in the next video. I love you guys. I'll see you later.